Within this video, we will talk about entity transforms. So where to use entity transforms, how to use them, what kind of possibilities would you have in there, and anything revolving about entity transforms. However, if you haven't seen from previous videos how data flows go or how this information was pulled in, we would recommend you to watch those videos as well. So first of all, for the data transformation, I would like to use the data that came in through one of the tasks before. To do this, I can go to the uh, task, I can go to the entity data, and I can click on this button to copy that information. So from here, I could go to an entity transformer, and I would like to create an entity transformer. So first of all, let's look at the entity transformer page and see what's all happening here. First of all, we of course have our name. So we could name that once more, getting started session, and we have a transformer. The, we can also apply a certain description, and then we can apply a whole bunch of transformers, and there's countless transformers in there. There's a whole bunch of those in there. Things we can do right away is, for example, saying like, okay, we want to paste the data that came from that task within here, and we would like to save that as well. But however, first we'll have to save it. I first have to fill in at least something in here, and then I'm allowed to save it. So with this, I can also say like, okay, I would like to save a certain test. And then if I would were to refresh the page, once I save it, I would like to refresh the page. Also the data is stored here locally. So it's not data that came actually from that uh, task at that moment, but it's just something I stored here locally, which I can also just change here if I would like to. I could also say like, okay, I want to have multiple tests in here. So let's say a test local, for example. And you can see the difference between if I switch the test that you can see that it's local data, which you can actually very simply say like, okay, we have data that is a fill test that always has to fill if it goes through. And we have data that always has to go through like perfectly fine. And you can have multiple tests that way. So this is the information that comes in from system A. Then whatever happens here on the left side through all of the settings and transformers, if we click on the run button, you will see what is the result of your transformations. So now let's actually apply uh, a few transformations. So in this case, we will go for a data transformation. And within the data transformation, we are going to add a value setter. As you can see here, we have a whole bunch of transformations of enriching your data, changing your data, all kinds of things. We are showing like the functionality of how those look like in short videos, uh, such as these, where you can actually see like, okay, there's a certain value setter. What, what does it do? How does it look like? Where is it used? How can I use that? We are still expanding to uh, provide that for all of the uh, transformations that are in here. So let's say we apply a value setter. A value setter allows me to write a new key and I can write certain info in that new key. So as currently we don't have that new key, if I run that right now, we will introduce a new key and therefore we can map a certain old value towards a new value. However, then putting just a hard-coded value in there is not something you would like to see. So therefore we want to have dynamically based on the data that's in there. We want to have, for example, the name, maybe we put a pipeline and then we put the phone number in there. So once we do that, we hit the run test. We can see that we have local in there because I actually changed the name over there. Then we have a pipeline and then it starts with the number after that. So that means that we can see like that the information is changed. Now you could say like, okay, we want to add like not, uh, more keys, more keys, because we need like a certain amount of keys to go towards the other system. However, we can make this slightly easier as well. So rather than going for each individual key in there, we would like to um, create an object. Within this object, you could map the whole structure that would actually have to go to the other system. So for example, we could say that we have um, a system that needs all of this information towards that other system. So once again, here on the right side is what comes from system A, and here on the left side is what has to go to system B, which is a structure of a customer, has a certain ID, an email address, and an address could have multiple addresses since it's in an array this time. And then from there, we can work with it. So this, we could start mapping very simply. We could say like, okay, there goes the ID, and uh, we have the email address, if we run this right now, we can see at the bottom that we see like, okay, we have a certain customer. It could be more customers in there. It has an address, could be more addresses in there. And then we filled in the ID and the email address. However, we didn't fill in the city and the street yet. If we would like to do that, we also have to apply the structure that is used over here of saying like, okay, the city in this case is one level deeper. So we would have to go through address and then say city. Once we run that right now, we can see that we also added in the city dynamically. So let's say we also did it for street and we did that for all of the other information that's also needed. In this case, we're looking at a very simple transformation. Of course, we provide very advanced transformations as well. 
then we have all of the information that we would have to send to system B in this case. So now we have a whole bunch of information which we don't necessarily need to have to send to system B because we have like the phone number, we have like the company, we don't need that for system B. What we can then say is like, okay, we filter out all of the previous information, but we can also make that slightly easier. In best practice, we mostly do it like this. We introduce the result key and within the result key, we can actually use the get branches from a pattern once more. So the get branches from a pattern allows us to split off objects by a certain pattern. So in this case, if I will put the star, it will put the ID in an individual object, the name in an individual object, et cetera, et cetera. However, I could also say instead of a um, star, I could say a specific key. So in this case, I'm going for the result key, which was introduced over here, which then also looks like, okay, we are only keeping the uh, information that we would like to send to the other system. So now we would have an entity transformer that we can use somewhere, for example, this one would be very likely to be on the outgoing configuration. You apply that. So you have your information coming in, it goes through this transformation, and then it is sent out on the outgoing configuration exactly with this kind of payload. Another transformation I would like to show is if we go back towards the uh, transformation overview, we create another ent uh, entity transformer. It still actually keeps the data in here from the previous time. Let's say we need different data. I can just copy that over it. It's not, uh, it's not stored within the tester itself yet. So we could say GIS and then we have a transformer and we call that enrich data. So in this case, once again, I first have to start with something to actually be allowed to save it. Um, this is also where I could explain like, okay, why am I starting with a chain of multiple entity transformers? Whereas I could also start with a data transformer. The difference is that the data transformer only contains data transformers. So for example, if I would like to use the get branches from a pattern, it's not on this level because the get branch from a pattern is not a data transformer, but an entity transformer. However, if I want to use multiple entity transformers or multiple data transformers, as of this case, it will be also possible to do this and then put the get branch from a pattern over there. So that's just a small best practice to give like a few um, tips of saying like, okay, we recommend you to start with a chain, even if you just use one data transformer, we just still recommend you to start with a chain. And therefore you can always access like the prototype transformers, but also saying like, for example, we just created the other transformer before. I can also call that one here right now, if I would like to. I can also call myself, but then you're kind of getting like an infinite loop depending on how you set it up. So in this case, we don't need any of those. And we're just going to look at how to enrich data as of this case for this transformer. So again, we're having the same data. Let's save that one locally as well. And for this, we would like to enrich the data by doing another API call to another API endpoint. We could say right away, we want to do an HTTP transformer. From this HTTP transformer, it is possible to access another API endpoint, even on a different system. And therefore we can uh, use that data. However, if I use an HTTP transformer right away, it doesn't have a specific location where to store that data. Therefore, it will actually override the data that's here on the right with the data that comes in from this transformer. However, to prevent this, we can use a merger transformer at first, which the merge transformer allows us to access uh, data from a different source and then write it to a specific key or in a specific structure. So in this case, we will have uh, customers here on the right which has certain blog posts to our rich nodes. So we can say like, okay, we have certain blog posts and we would write to, like to write the full object in there. So this is the notation for the full object. So this could also be saying like, it's similar to what you would say, like if this was the ID in there, but in this case, we're just writing the full object in there, which could also be multiple objects as of this case. So in this case, we would still talk to the HP transformer. We would have to go to a specific address, for example, the slash posts in this case, which is based on the same client as the one that was used before. And the only thing that probably goes wrong and that went wrong for me the first few times as well, if I would po um, run the test right now, it will post the full information that is in the payload right now within the request parameters up there. So pretty much this whole information gets paste in there and that's not something you would like. So we would have to remove that one in this case. So once we run the test right now, we scroll to the bottom, we see that we added multiple blog posts for a whole bunch of users. So we got like 100 blog posts in there, but they're all for like different uses. So this for user ID seven, for user ID five, et cetera, but we're only looking at ID 10, user ID 10. So how to fix that? 
So the endpoint has a possibility to say like, okay, we want to have that for a specific user. We could say like, okay, we want to get it just for user ID seven. And where we can see that we only have the data for user ID seven. Would we make this more dynamic? We can say within here, we want to have the ID for user ID seven, but not ID seven. We want to have that dynamically for the ID that comes from here. So we have 10 and then it also explains the 10 and 10 over there. We could also locally say like, okay, ID 10 goes through perfectly fine, but how about ID two? We can run the test button and we can say like, okay, ID two also goes through perfectly fine. Now you could say like, okay, we have like multiple keys and then we go for multiple keys and then it adds up to a very long st uh, string on the request. We can also make this slightly better looking with saying like, okay, we have this request parameters, we create that to an object and we actually are going for key value notation where we would say like user ID is then a certain ID. Let's make it dynamic right away. And running this will do exactly the same as before. However, it's very easier to look at it. And you could easily say like, okay, we have one key and then we add like three, five more keys or anything you would like there. We could save this. And with that, you have a simple transformation of saying like, okay, we pulled certain information in. We enrich that with other information. And therefore this can be mapped together and then uh, sent out to another system. Another transformation I would like to show you, which is a very simple multiplication transformation, which could be done, for example, by prices, which I already have in the system itself. So in this case, I would go to the price transformation. And here we have a very simple payload of saying like, okay, we have a certain price, we have a certain discount, again, more prices, more discounts. We go over the um, objects through a node transformer, which loops over the objects. We do a certain operator transformer of a multiplication of the price uh, times the discount, and we write that to the price including discount field. If we run this right now, we can see that we have, besides just the price and the discount field, we also have a price including discount field. So that's uh, something you can use for a lot of implementations of a lot of different things, but that's just showing a very simple example of, for example, counting, uh, for example, calculating discounts. So this is the end of the video for entity transformers. In the next video, we will talk about using Alumio as a caching system, some more advanced things on pulling in information, sending that out, but also having certain information filtered out. So if you would like to see more, I highly recommend to watch that video as well. So other transformations, we commonly get uh, asked the question too, can you apply certain business logic towards uh, transformations as well? Like, so let's say if something happens, then we want to do this. If something else happens, then we would like to do something else. For that, we have the data transformation. That is then the conditional transformer, which is better explained within this video, but just having a very brief introduction of it, saying like, okay, if certain conditions are met, let's say a value condition, we have a certain key, that certain key is, for example, the key of a name. And then we would say like, we add a certain uh, condition is equal to a certain name or a certain group or anything like that. Then we are going to do certain different steps of actually enriching the data, setting extra data, or if not, we would cut it off, maybe filter it out or anything like that. So that is why you can apply your business logic through the entity transformers as well.